Hello, and welcome back to Old Comic Book Day. I'm your man, Mud. My middle name, Mud is my middle name. My first name is Kerr, and my last name is Jun, and I'm an old guy. Uh, I like the old comics and not the new stuff. Uh, so what I want to do with this video is, um, in my very first video I showed that I have 54 short boxes. Well, three of my short boxes contain all of my independent comic books uh, from independent labels, or presses, whatever, publishers, such as Image, Dark Horse Comics, uh, Bongo even, <laughs> uh, America's Best Comics, um, whatever. If it's not Marvel or DC, I've got it in these three boxes and I labeled the boxes in my, my bedroom just I1, I2, I3. And so what I thought I'd do is, uh, on this channel, I'm going to be doing a lot of reviews of, of comic books um, and some deep dives and, you know, specific issues and stuff like that. But uh, in my rereading of my collection, I'm only going to be rereading Marvels and DCs because about 15 years ago or so, I reread the three boxes of my independence as, like, a little way to start off. I had some time, I want to say it was, be like, there was like a month between uh, law school graduation and the start of the bar review course or something. I don't know. Maybe or maybe maybe it was the summer after I, before I started law school, and I I, I thought you know what I'm just gonna read these comics before I you know go into the grind of starting law school. So so I read three short boxes. You know, uh, one fifty about four hundred some comics all all in one 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 stint of a month or so, and uh, and so I'm not gonna spend in the next, you know, bunch of years, anytime rereading re those, because I've already given them, you know, a first, second, you know, or so read through when I was a kid, and then in, into my teens, and then I totally reread them all, you know, just, just a, you know, those handful of years ago. So what I'm going to do is do reviews without reading. I mean, I remember these mostly, but I just want to show the covers, do an unboxing, and talk to the particular comic a little bit and say what I can. I'm going to try to keep uh, these videos about to arbitrarily to 20 minutes because I can't get through a whole box with me being super long-winded. I, I can't get through a whole box in, in 20 minutes, so it's going to be just whatever it is for 20 minutes. And I, I won't stop in the middle of a run, but um, but but yeah, I'll just stop it at about 20 minutes. Um, okay, so... This is not the first comic. Uh, I just used this I, uh, earlier. I took a picture of this to be the thumbnail for the uh, for the video. Um, but let's just get in here, and I'm gonna open this. And I'm sorry if I jostle the camera a little bit. It's just propped up in front of. Um, okay, so randomly, I went to a free comic book day a while, you know, like somewhere in the th early thousands, aughts, or whatever, and got this. Uh, Landis from A Bomb Comics. It was uh, not good. All right. Then a great treat here is America's Best Comics: The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Um, yeah, Alan Moore and uh, what is it, Kevin uh, Kevin O'Neill? Okay, so. Uh, yeah, not, not nothing to be said about this. It's it's Alan Moore. It's it's fantastic. It's a great comic. Uh, I really enjoyed this first one, and I do have the second, which I'll show in a minute. And it's just he just gets dark. Now this one is very very good, and they made a movie, um, The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. And I plan to do um, superhero comic movie reviews on this channel as well. And I will just hold up my DVD box and talk. For 15 minutes or so, 5, 10, 15 minutes about about each each film, and I will be talking about the film for this. I just watched it all last week, actually, just you know a few nights ago, and uh, and it was uh, it was it was it was a good movie. It's it's good. It's it's really high quality, really well well produced. But I but as far as the comic, I remember it just being fantastic as as all Alan Moore's you know stuff is for the most part. Um, and then the the problem with Alan Moore is that he gets too crazy, creepy, whatever. And the second volume was not as good, 
And I don't remember if the thing I didn't care for the most was in the second volume or, or, or this one, but uh, I'll tell you about it when I, uh, when I pull the next trade paperback uh, out of the box. So I uh, highly recommend, super duper fun, real good book. Uh, he obviously gets Victorian era uh, novels from, you know, Br Britain, you know, uh, great novels, you know, uh, I don't know anything about Alan Quartermain or Mina Harkness or Hark whatever her name is. Never read Dorian Gray, never read The Invisible Man. I have seen the original Disney film, uh, under 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, so no no Nemo very well, but, um, or I did read Robert Louis Stevenson's Jekyll and Hyde, and uh, gosh, I could be wrong, but as far as I know, Dr. Jekyll, when he turns into Mr. Hyde in the Robert Louis Stevenson novel, it's a short little thin book, he turns into more of a wiry, muscularly kind of described as like a monkey ch chimp kind of monster, not like this big hulking behemoth. So I don't know where that changed or morphed over the, and, and maybe I just, don't even remember the novel that well, but it was, it was not. I I, I read the novel about fifteen years ago, and it was not, it, it was not what came to the popular culture. It was a really weird book. It was different, and it, and it, the popular culture version of Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde is more, more fun in all its iterations in Bugs Bunny cartoons or whatever than is the actual novel, but. So I don't think they got it right either here in this book or in um, the movie either. So anyway, uh, put that down and grab the next one out of here. Okay, so uh, here is volume two. Uh, pretty enjoyable, but then it, you, things get a little more obscure. Oh, yeah, I forgot the Invisible Man is one of them. Um, but I, I think, and I'm, I'm not sure... It, I know this happens, but, I, but I, and I think it happens in this volume, not the first volume, but... Dear God, Alan Moore, what's wrong with you? Hyde, like, rapes the Invisible Man. Like, frickin' rapes him. You know, the Invisible Man's, like, shady and a criminal or bat, whatever, and, you know, his own kind of near-do-well. But he just rapes him. Like, male on male... I, I just, I don't even... Even from an independent press, it's kind of like a superhero team, superhero comics. I don't want a guy raping another guy. I just don't want to, I don't want to, no, not, no. What's wrong with you? So, you know, like, uh, I, I talked to this guy named Ace at, at my local comic shop, and we, we get into long conversations about Alan Moore and, and some of the great stuff he's done. And, and we, we both are of the opinion, man, great, amazing. Got to read as much of his stuff as we can here and there. And I'm glad I dropped off at certain points and didn't read anymore. I, did. I certainly haven't read the third volume, and I won't. But, but one of the unique things that we both said about him is that we love to read his stuff. And we've seen him on videos and interviews or whatever, but we would never want to meet him. <laughs> we'd, we'd never want to meet Alan Moore <laughs> or hang out with him or anything like that. The guy would be too, you know, it's a little, a little too weird or whatever. Um, anyway, so I'll, I'm sure I'll talk more about Alan Moore and great stuff, you know, and his great Com comics uh, in this channel uh, as we as I move through things. Okay, um, let me grab a bunch here so I don't. Well, let me be a little more careful. Grab a bunch so I don't have to keep reaching out. Oh shoot! Don't you hate it when comics shift in a box? I pack them pretty well so I can move them around a little bit, but I never. I hate that feeling when when a, a handful of comics slam on another. It's the worst worst thing in the world. Okay. So, uh, next, I just have an old Archie. Archie's TV laugh out. Whatever. Don't know how I got it. Didn't buy it for sure, but I just, you know, somebody gave it to me or whatever. Okay. Um, Bartman, Bongo Comics. So, the backdrop of this, and I'm, I'm going to put it down because I'm doing this in alphabetical order for the, for the comics. Simpsons comes last in this uh, set of Bongos. But, um, boy, oh, boy. Uh, <laughs> Simpsons was a huge, huge hit when I was in high school. I think about my freshman year, uh, it, it came out, 88, 89 time frame. And, uh, and then three, four years later in 92, when they started coming out with the comics, the first one was this, uh, uh, was this, this Simpsons comics and stories. But you could see that a story about Maggie, Lisa, Bartman, and Radioactive Man. And 
I think yeah, there's a poster back here too, I believe, and uh, I just kept it in the in there. Um, but uh, super super great that so this this was a lot of fun. It was a hit. It sold well, and through the success of this, they decided to launch Bongo Comics, and there was a bunch of number ones in the same month. I have them all. And this was Bartman, and I was looking at Mile High Comics. Not that they're the true price, uh, you know, thing, but this was, you know, looking about 30, 30 bucks on that one. Um, the more interesting one I have, uh, I forget where this came out of, but um, anyway, great, fantastic. Um, I'm not sure if this isn't, yeah, this is probably the next, this is cool. I crown, but it looks like the next cover enhancement is going to be my blood. Really cool about that. Like, okay, I think it, it might be a little bit of a, and this is a, yeah, it is a, uh, <laughs> a glossy cover of silver, silver ink. But there's a couple, couple things that these these covers do homages to. It's pretty cool. I, this may be like you know the the Joker dropping into the the vat, you know, in, in many iterations of the origin of Joker. But but the cover enhancement. This you know obviously in '92, '93 they were doing tons of die hologram covers, die cast cover, die cut covers, you know, whatever, uh, help to break the industry, all those stupid gimmicky covers, I hate them, but unless they're cleverly done like this, but the other cool thing about the cover enhancement is going to be my blood, I don't know if that was intentional or not, or if this had already happened, or, or this happened later, but um, Mark Grunewald actually, you know, legend goes, and it's on, he had, he had his blood, or maybe his ashes after he died, mixed in with the colors for a comic book so that when the comic book was printed it would contain him his blood or whatever i don't know i just something something cool all right um yeah so that was 30 bucks but this one ash can bartman and radioactive man i don't know if it came out of a wizard i wasn't really i didn't buy wizards back then i obviously a promotional material of some sort it was fantastic it was great uh, funny and uh, yeah, that's, this is listed at like forty-eight bucks on on uh, Mile High Comics for a near mint, which I'm sure this is. Um, all right, so then, itchy and scratchy comics. They fight, they fight, they fight and fight and fight, 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 fight. The itchy and scratchy show. Fun comic, Re really good, but the absolute best. Absolute best in the run. So great. Radioactive man. Uh, uh, yeah, this is actually, um, there is actually, it's a glow in the dark cover actually. So his skeleton is in there. So it's like an effect after the atomic bomb goes off and turns him, I'm turning radioactive. Um, you, you, you can hold this up to, to the light and the, he glows. Uh, so it's, it's just fantastic. Um, really great. And then they, what they did was they this first issue of six, this first run of six, which I don't have all six. I have the first four. They numbered in various you know ways. So the second one is number eighty eight, but they but they number them differently and they give homages to different you know types and eras of comics and and stuff like that. Um, this is from like maybe the second volume. So even though it says number four from nineteen fifty three, it's actually like. The seventh, eighth, or ninth uh, radio uh, radioactive band that was put out. Um, okay, I'm gonna grab some more out of the box. Okay, this one was actually the second radioactive man, number eighty-eight. It was covered. Um, then I have number one hundred six was not the third or whatever, but um, from the second volume or whatever. This is beautiful. This is such a clever and fun comic book um, cover. The irradiated crusader is challenged by impractical dinosaurs while trying to unlock the secret of the golden key. It's a little bit overt because these were. this is a, a cover homage to gold key comics, many of which looked... In, in design, you know, in coloring like this. Um, but it's, it's, I just instantly recognized that I was in some, you know, bin somewhere and I was like, oh, that's clever. And I, I, I was like, I'm going to buy it. So I did. And it's, uh, it's good. 
This is a great, great cover. And another one, uh, number 136, but again, from the second or third volume, something like that. Okay, and I don't know every one of these, which is the homage to which cover or whatever, but that's a campy, you know, kind of Batman sort of thing. Jumping jeepers, yeah, baby, he's dancing on the beach while a super villain. It's obviously some sort of Batman homage, you know, because they, they say May 1966, so the Batman TV show. All right, then Radioactive Man, number 216. This is actually number three from the limited, uh, six-issue limited series run. Um, and uh, so let's see here. Then I've got Radioactive Man, number 412, which is actually um, the... Uh, the fourth in the limited series of the first volume. Um, yeah, this looks like a some sort of Batman and Robin type homage. Or, you know what? Is that? Yeah, no, I'm taking it back. Uh, it's got to be a Crisis on Infinite Earths number seven homage. Superman crying and holding the dead body of uh, Supergirl. Uh, Crisis on Infinite Earths number seven. If I, I believe, yeah, it's got to be that. Okay, this one is a completely easy to capture homage. This is uh, Simpsons Comics number one. Obviously, Fantastic Four number one. He's here and he's hungry. The amazing colossal Homer. All right, so Bongo Comics. These these first runs. I mean, they're all probably really fun. Um, actually, I, I, at another free comic book day, I picked up one with my son. And uh, he's read it, and he laughed at it, even though he hadn't seen The Simpsons yet. And now he has seen about seven s volumes of, of Simpsons on um, seven, the first seven seasons on Disney+. Plus. So we're very, we very much enjoyed those, and uh, he enjoyed that comic, and uh, the one from Free Comic Book Day. And it was like four, four different stories in there, and they were all fun. They were, they were a lot of good. So Bongo is continuing its high quality of funny, you know, great stuff. But if you, if you are a collector and you're able to get these first issues... Uh, many of these other ones are, are like about 12 bucks or something on Mile High Comics. I just use that to go quick, get a quick price because I know they've got everything on there. Um, they're, they're usually uh, overpriced for most of the U.S. market. It's just their thing. It's what they do. But, um, but yeah, check, check those out if you can get them. All right. So next up is uh, going through publishers alphabetically. Continuity Comics. Um, so this is Samory, Mistress of the Martial Arts. I found this at 7-Eleven. Uh, it was the 7-Eleven right across the street from my local comic book shop when I was, you know, whatever, 14, 15, 16. And it was just, what a beautiful, beautiful girl. You know, what, what well drawn. I don't know if it's, is it, is it Neil Adams? I don't know. I can't. Inside the interior cover, it's like Neil Adams is is listed, or I don't know if he's like writing it or inking it, or and and it and there's another guy, but anyway, she's supposed to be 16, and it's like yeah, that they, she they, she is not drawn like a 16 year old, <laughs> but uh, anyway, I only uh, I don't remember much about it, but when I was when I was in the store, I was just strict struck by the cover, and I was and it was two dollars, and I was like ah, I'm not spending two dollars on a comic, but. It was it was in there. It was in that 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 it was in that um 7-Eleven for like months. Like I I'd, I'd keep popping back in, you know, to to look at the spinner rack in there and it or the the shelf or whatever they had and it just didn't go away. So it kept beckoning to me, you know, it it, it was on the shelf longer than it should have been and I don't know that anybody ever even touched it because and I think to this day this thing is in mint condition. Well, I like to say mint, but near mint you know it's it's a nine eight you know a nine six if i'm if, i mean but that's also what what drew me to it is like wow this thing's beautiful shiny you know i don't have there's not a single i can't i can't see a single spine tick you know um anyway just you know and so i bought it and it was like oh and so it's continuity comics and she, she, there's apparently you know a cutaway on the third page or so if, to some other super team of teens that were not at all drawn like teens, these muscular guys look look they just look older. So anyway, um I it's just one of those things it's like there's there's a, every so often a, a cover will grab you and and you just it just compels you to buy it even to 
even if the inside you don't know or care much about it, it's, 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 it's just one of those things. It was pretty cool. So, um, fun, you know, just fun little, fun little story to tell you. It's just that, you know, Hey, your, your comics come from all different places and, and, and I lament the loss of spinner racks in, in, in the, uh, in the bookstores and the seven 11s and the gas stations, because this is how these, these are your entries into comics and, and, my local comic shop, I don't think, carried many of these continuity comics, if, if anything. But, you know, I was like, oh, hey, there's other super teams out there. I, I wish I had a million dollars to buy them all. I literally thought, gosh, that would be great if I could get all the DCs and all the continuities and all the, you know. It's not to be, but it was just, uh, it, it's just it's just interesting to know that there's other stuff out there and, and, and other companies were trying uh, to, to produce stuff. Um, all right, I am going to stop the video. That'll be that'll be it. Let me let me put the very beautiful girl up again. She does have a, a, a humanish name, a girl, a regular girl's name. I forget what it was. I looked uh, on Mile High Comics. They have the um, first three pages in there, and I I, I looked at it last night, uh, and uh, I forgot her name already. So something something generic and normal like Deborah Chanley or something. I don't know. So, um, yeah, uh, I was going to, uh, the next I poked at in there was um, Comics Greatest World. So a, uh, a preview for the next, so yeah, from Dark Horse Comics, Comics Greatest World. Um, and I can't start down that path right now because it will take too long to uh, discuss in a video that I want to keep to a, now I'm at 21 minutes, 38 seconds, but uh, I want to keep to, a, you know, around a 20 minute length and I'm trying to put a few of these in the in the can because I'm I want to publish a few um, on YouTube but um, I won't have time in the next five days to record very much so uh, just trying to just trying to get a few get a few done um, but yeah this has uh, been fun I, I hope you enjoyed it and thank you for watching <laughs>